Welcome to the You Need More Money podcast. I'm your host, Matt Monero, coming to you from our studios in Dallas, Texas, where I always bring you people who have done it. I'm not talking about wannabes. I'm talking about people who have achieved, who have mastered the game of money, who are willing to come into my studio, give you tips, strategies, stories, and then at the end, sign my booth. So today I've got Holly, Holly Signorelli with me. Holly is the money therapist. Welcome, Holly. Welcome. Thank you. You, you. you happy to be here? Yes, I love love everything about your brand. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. I appreciate that very much. I mean, we know each other through Bethany, and that's mm-hmm. um, that's how we became friends. But you know, I mean, I, I I love your hard driving approach towards money too. I mean, it's a really no BS mindset, right? That's right. Yeah. You know, people are so afraid to talk about money it's it's a big problem in the entire planet Mm -hmm. it's the only thing that i can think of really because we have political issues here in the united states right now but i'm talking about globally everyone has this feeling at least 90 to 95 percent of the population on the entire globe feels like there's a lack and fear of money Mm -hmm. you know and it's like something that we all have in common but it's a negative Thing that's in common. Yeah, it's yeah. the thing. It's the thing we should all be talking about. And nobody wants to talk about it. Right. Right. It's right. We should feel good about money. We should be like like. I love how you post things, you know, like you talk about the money that you make. And I don't think it's like an arrogant thing. People think it's arrogant if you talk about money, um, it, but it's really not. It's like money is just a thing. And that's what people have. Yeah. If people understood that money is just an exchange, then they wouldn't take it so seriously. Well, I think money wants to be submissive. It wants to be controlled. And most people don't know how to take control over it, so it controls them, right? But yeah. the reality is when you control money, it rolls over for you. It's like, it's like your dog at home. It rolls over, it gives you its belly, and it wants to be petted. It literally wants you to control it. Yeah. But if you don't, it will just eat It'll you. It'll control you. Yeah. yeah. And I know in your career as a CPA, let's go back a little bit. So give the audience a little bit about your background. Uh, well, I've been in the finance world for my whole life. Like even when I was a teenager, I wanted to be a CPA. And then some, uh, you know, a few years into that, I became a financial advisor, mainly because I was seeing tax returns that had no correlation to, you know, gains or the tax, you know, tax ramifications and things like that. And I also did grow up in a really great family where we were not rich at all. It was one income, you know, four kids and 44 foster kids that we had one at a time. Incredible. So so we didn't have, we were not rich by any means, but we never had money. We had everything that we needed and my parents never talked about money in a negative way. They were, they felt prosperous, Mm. not because money isn't necessarily what makes you prosperous. Money, again, is just an exchange so that you can have the things that you want. Mm. And they felt like they had all that they needed. What did your dad do for a living? Um, He's, well, he's retired now, but he's a... a, a badass a, electrical engineer. Okay. So, you know, working for like Cisco, doing like amazing things like that. So he had a good career. Mm-hmm. Um, now he's got a pension, all oh, that yeah. sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. So so actually, you're, 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 your experience with your parents is not, I mean, they're taking care of themselves financially. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. So even if there was just one income and a bunch of kids, they always saved every month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were, you know, did not have debt. Yeah. Yeah. So that's opposite of mine, right? I mean, my my mom and my mother in law love them both to death, but neither of them did well with money, and and they're basically living off Social Security. Yeah. And that's a pretty tough way to go. Yeah, and that is very tough. It's when I'm working with a client like that that you know you're having to work with what they have. It can be really challenging. Yeah. My mom lives on thirteen hundred and some odd dollars a month, and my mother in law has about eighteen hundred bucks a month coming in consistently, right? So, my mom is fortunate that she doesn't have debt on the house that she lives in and she does have a part-time job that throws off a little bit of cash but you know you're talking two thousand dollars a month yeah for the rest of your life i mean you're not going to paris you're not driving the country in an rv or riding a harley with your boyfriend i mean those just those those dreams evaporate if you don't get the money situation right yeah that's right and you know one of the things that i've been really studying lately and with my book that i'm working on right now it's in, and it's got a little ways to what's go, it going to be called is it's called the wealth fulfillment formula okay and then the tag is a love story about money and courage oh there you go yeah. i like that because of what i've been really understanding is a lot of this has to do with the brain you know our brain is 
it, it doesn't really have our best interest in mind. And most of us have bad money stories. And some of us have bad love stories, right? Yeah. But if I told you, like, if I was single and I said, you know what, I don't know if I'm ever going to get married, you would tell me, hey, if there's something, somebody for everyone. You know, people would encourage you. But if you went to somebody and you said, um, man, I'm really having a bad month this year, my money's bad, they would start telling you their money story, too. <laughs> their pain so, side. Yes, right. and this is a scientific fact this part of your brain and we won't get too technical about this when it remaps your brain when you tell yourself something so when you tell your story your money story even to yourself complaining about it or to other people your brain will remap itself accordingly and mm. take away the creativity that would give you great um, you know, ideas to Love make it. money. Yeah, and totally. Apply to anybody, anything else, but I'm, we're talking about money today. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. I go deep on that one. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's like a symbiotic relationship, is what I call it, because when two people come together and they fall in love. What happens? The two become one. Look right? at you with all these love things. I, I mean, I see it on Facebook. You and Ray yeah. got a love story going yeah, we on. Do. I mean, we really. Have the real deal. That, that is definitely for sure. You tell, I mean, you hit the lottery, you two yeah, guys, I know, right? I know. It took a while, but it, you know. It's a good life you yeah, guys got going. We got married in our forties, but sometimes that's the best time. But I, I mean, no, truly, not not to belabor the point, but I mean, I see the love uh, that you guys have. I mean, and that that adds so much strength to whatever the challenges are, right? Yes. Well, and that's interesting because um, one of the things that I'm writing in my book is that I have never seen a client fall in love and we're in that beginning phase where you're just deeply in love that doesn't make more money. And you, know <laughs> you know why? Because love is the most powerful vibration that there is and it negates all negative <laughs> energies and all resistance. And then suddenly these clients will be coming up with all kinds of wonderful new ideas with their business. Yeah. Or maybe they just take something that's already good and make it better yeah. because they're not in that negative zone. Yeah. So see, it's really, we talk about mindset said a lot but really that word's been overused and when you overuse a word then it kind of loses its meaning so that's why I'm saying like when you can compare things to like love then it's the same thing with money because money is a thing right it's a thing but it's also a thought mm -hmm. and thoughts are things too yeah so if you want to have a symbiotic relationship with your money you need to tell a better story I love that. It's all it's an emotional connection too, right? And Absolutely. most of us, ninety nine percent of us have a terrible emotional connection. Whether our parents told us that we, we can't afford it. Yeah. Um, or we had failures and we lost it and or so we end up just if you make a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe the, the, the such maybe the baloney. billionaires have it right. Maybe they really understand the formula. Of course but they hey, do. The money is just a thing. Yes. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's completely available. But you have to use your creativity and of course your, your hard work too. So I think what, what interests me uh, to have you on the on the podcast is that you've seen so many different customers mm -hmm. as a CPA and as a financial planner. Yeah. And so how much money do people have? Do people have enough money? Um, most of the, right now, I actually changed my, my um, CPA practice to have less clients and bigger clients now just because I've done it for so long. So I feel like as you grow with your clients, you know, you, if you're going to be at the top of the top, you've got to be at the top of the top clients as well. You move up the so food chain. Yeah, yeah. So, and then I still take on some smaller clients too. But, you know, this is a very prosperous place. But I think what really is the problem in general with money right now in our country is that ever since 2008 people have started just spending every dime that they have. That, so, I remember you telling me that once before. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. Holly thinks that that we we got so contracted in 08 and 09 mm -hmm. and so many people did what they were supposed to do which was shut down that spending and, and yeah. get get close to what was important that in 11 12 we just started going crazy yeah. again right where yeah. it was a pent up like, demand to spend that's right it was like a spending starvation and it turned into a spending spree yeah and you know so most of my clients like 90 percent of them are financial client too so they're saving obviously but i'm just saying in general there's a lot of people that they're afraid to save because somebody's going to take it away from them. But I have this theory that the money is moved 
and it can, the only data point that I think needs to be told about is when I graduated college in 1991, to be mm -hmm. in the top 1% of earners, you needed to make 100 grand. Right. Today, that number is 384,000. Yeah. So the money has moved, and the big question is, have you moved with it, right? So right. many people are still chasing these old numbers. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a million in retirement, whether it's 100 grand a year, whatever that is, it, it's totally false today. The number is much higher. Yeah. So what are you seeing with your clients? I mean, are, are you seeing people making 500 grand a year, a million dollars a oh, year yeah, regularly absolutely. now? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's just more like the 10%, you mm -hmm. know, of people. That's why I say like 90% of people, if they're making like 250 or 300 or even, a, you know, half a million, sometimes they're just spending all of it or yeah, even yeah. owing taxes or even having <laughs> debt. Just like we talk about with the lottery thing, you know, where people get a lot of money and then they spend all of it and they end up broke for yeah. three to five years. So if people would, again, think of money as just a thing, you know, and not not um, personalize it so much, then they would be saving more and paying down debts and still having the time of their lives. You know, you just because a lot of people don't even really want to even do a financial plan. They don't even want to do the numbers to see what they should be doing every month. Yeah. And even with people that have a lot of money, they can be the ones that are the most scared about it. Absolutely. And they're afraid of, I mean, I know a billionaire whose primary concern is, can he do it twice, right? <laughs> Does he think it was a one-shot wonder that happened? I mean, he really has self-conscious issues about, is he capable of pulling it off a second time? By the way, yes. unbelievably aggressive in wanting to do it. This guy yeah. isn't coasting at all, yeah. right? Um, but he's scared to death. Was it luck? Or could he actually do it again? I get that a lot, too, when somebody has a banner year because yeah, it's like, totally. they'll be like, well, I'm not going to be able to do that next year. And I'm like, <laughs> what, what do you mean? I love you that. just did it. Why wouldn't you do it right. again? It was a fluke. I'm not worthy of this amount of income. It's a fluke. Yeah, I mean, I went me, through it too. If the, the bar has been set, it's been set. Yeah. There's no going under that bar, you know? But it happened to me too. I mean, I, I there, it's exactly how my mindset was. I mean, and, and, and we, we did a three-year strategic plan a number of years ago, and um, I brought in the number one guy in our industry to help me with it. Yeah. The best of the best. And I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. We were in our old office and we owned the office building and I thought that was an important thing. Everyone told me, you know, you're going to make the money when you sell your business is made in the real estate because the company, I think that's yeah. so, that was such small minded thinking on my part. But I remember walking in the, in the parking lot, we were talking on the cell phone and we were, we were, he had done the analysis and the number at the bottom was so big, I said, it's, your numbers have to be wrong. It's not possible that we could earn that kind of net income in three years. Oh, uh, yeah? Wow. <laughs> I, I, I said, it's totally impossible. It was, it, I'm not kidding here, and this is, this is a, a weakness that I had at that time, which was I just didn't understand scale. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I never dreamt big enough. And so that number, that seven-figure number, was so... It was so impossible for right. me to get my hands around. I questioned his data. And he gave me one of the best pieces of advice. Is he said, you're looking at the wrong component of the spreadsheet. You're looking at the bottom. The bottom is just math. What you need to look at is the middle. Can you execute on the middle of the spreadsheet, right? I love that. The yeah. rev growth, the expense contraction, the hiring, the executive management team, the marketing component. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Because if you do that, it's just a formula. So did that change for you because it was like an actionable step for you to be like, okay, can I do Changed this? Like it was action for totally. your part? Up to that point, it was all done on a wing and a prayer. Yeah. And so to see it in writing, whether it's a budget, whether mm -hmm. it's a business plan, whether it's a financial planning plan, whatever, yeah. you need to begin because most A-type personalities who can achieve want to climb the hill, but they never drew the hill. Right. right. So yeah. we don't know what we're climbing. We're just doing it, doing it, doing it every day. And when I saw that, I just attacked it with vengeance. And, and uh, we did it in 18 months instead of three years. Oh, wow. That's and that great. was an amazing thing. But again, back to your point, when it happened, I absolutely said, is this sustainable? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and it was. And, and of course, it set the new bar. Yeah. And then competitiveness and A-type personality kicks back in again. And now you want to go higher, right? Yeah, exactly. So it was, uh, it, it's a key experience. One last thing that I don't think people really understand, but the math is pretty straightforward. If you put away $2,000 a month 
at a 6% rate of return, in 21 years you have a million dollars. Yeah. So, so when people think of it like that, can you put away two grand? Yeah, most people are making enough money where they could sock away two grand. Right. Put it in the right tool, get 6%, and in 21 years you have a million bucks. So you could start at 40 in your 60s, you're okay. Start yeah. at 50 in your 70s, okay, but what if I don't want to work till I say, fine. So in your 60s, you got 400 grand or 500 grand, and you got nothing right now. Right. Just get started. Now, max it, go to three or 4,000, watch that 21 years contract. Yeah, and I think it's good to use a smaller number percentage, like you said, by like 6%, because that makes it just a little bit more comfortable for people like they may be looking for an eight to ten percent and then there's these like this year you know where you get twenty yeah. percent but then they also know it's going to go down so it's kind of like if you can do a, a plan that is makes sense to people you know then the more the bet you know if they make a higher percent then that's good but like you said then it's it's attainable because that's when people don't when they're not looking at the numbers or just the bottom line like you were doing then they're like oh do i want to put this money in or could i wait and totally you know, people or, in general will just put off anything if they can and then don't we don't we then start to look for the home run right and exactly. i did this too i started to save all this money have it as liquid powder i would say oh i mm -hmm. got this usually i'm ready to pounce right yeah well but you may not have the opportunity to get 12 or 15 or 20 percent so sometimes getting six as secure money not hard to get six you can get mm -hmm. six a lot of places would you agree with that you're a financial planner yeah, would you agree course, with that course. so you don't even have to be that smart or connected to get your hands on 6% annual returns. Yeah. I mean, you can find it in a lot of different places. You yeah. put it in an index fund and probably get it no problem, exactly. right? Yeah. You, you don't need much skill to do that. But we wait for this home run because we know we're behind. That's right. And you know, if we talked before, I mean, my brother-in-law, who we, my brother-in-law died um, mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, and he used to always say, "I know I'm behind, but I'm gonna make up for it. I know I'm behind, but I'll make up for it." Right. And 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 he didn't have the chance. You know, died at 46. Yeah. With nothing. So you don't always know whether you can make up for it. So my point is, get some money put aside. I've done this in my own world too. Get some safe money, mm -hmm. put it aside. Like for my wife, for example, she's a security freak, right? I mean, she just wants to know that everything is going to be okay. Good, yeah. Right. And so what I was able to do is I was able to put away enough money in totally secure investments to throw off enough passive income for her that she's okay forever. Yeah. Right? And she's that made her feel great when I did that. By the way, it made me feel good too. I didn't think it was ever gonna happen. Made it happen, and now I say, I get all the rest to get rich, <laughs> right? I took care of you, now, I, now the rest is mine. Now let me see what I can do with it, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, you, everybody gets crazy about this home run idea that this something is gonna come across their desk that they're gonna hit, mm -hmm. and it's just, they're gonna buy the beachfront property and then it's gonna explode. And they never end up buying the beachfront property. Well, exactly, because again, if you don't have any savings or you don't have any kind of a plan, because even if your plan, uh, you know that you're not even putting enough for your plan if you don't have that then what do you have you have stress yeah. whether and you're either talking about it sharing your money story about that or it's just hanging over your head so again you can't be creative to come up with new yeah. ways to make money that's a big takeaway for me today though is really you're trusting in the energy almost the energy of the of the um, surrounding right yeah. my buddy Rick Sapio says trust in the energy of the universe and you'll be okay and I actually I mean that's a little bit far-fetched but it's for him well it, I think because he probably is an actionable person right so what I always tell people like with my formulas is like the mindset part and the emotion and understanding what you're telling your brain and your brain starts taking over for you you know those are things that you have to kind of get out of the way to begin with right and you need to know what your gifts are and a lot of people don't feel comfortable even talking about their gifts and everybody has gifts so you should be okay talking about it it's, you know and then you need to incorporate that in, into what you do which is probably what you do and why you're so successful you gotta have how a do you plan. not be successful if you're doing something that is a gift yeah you know you gotta yeah. have a plan though yeah and you have to have actionable steps your actions have to be in alignment with your goals so are your actions Actions in alignment with what you're trying to do with your money. Totally. You know? If but I, I think what you're talking about on this emotional thing, isn't it a little easier for a woman to connect with that than a man? I mean, isn't it isn't it easier for a woman to trust energy and feelings where a man just says he's got to push the rock every day? Um, yeah, that This is a good subject. Uh, I love this subject because we all have a masculine and feminine energies, right? So you're a man. It, you have feminine energies, but that doesn't make you feminine, easy, right? Easy, easy. <laughs> 
I'm a woman. I have masculine energies, but I'm not a man, right? But we have to support both sides of that. So a lot. So the typical um, stereotype of a man would be that they're just going after it, going after it, not caring. Whereas I look at you and, and the things that you talk about, you're a go-getter, but you seem to care very much about people, or it you changed. wouldn't waste your time. It changed for me a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah. Really, yeah. I, so, was, I, I was a killer. I was only out for what was in it for me. I, I, I had to get to that level that allowed me to actually look back and say, okay, I, I'm, I'm not the fat kid. I'm not the kid who's who's adopted dad, called him stupid, idiot. You don't have idiot, to prove moron. anything to anybody. I yeah. can accept. Yeah. I, can ex I can bury all that stuff and get to terms with all that self-worth and self-esteem stuff and actually start to believe that I have achieved something. And that was yeah. a major. When that happened for me, everything changed in this company too. We called it the torch. It happened in 15 and 16 where we just blew this place up. Yeah. And we have people that work for us today that would never work for the old company. Mm -hmm. And when we tell stories about some of the horror stories, mm -hmm. like one time um, we were in this studio, it was set up differently, and um, and I was doing the radio show, and uh, we constantly had audio problems, and the sound guy would just, he just couldn't get it right. And so we prepped and prepared all week, and I said, okay, this time we're gonna have it perfect, right? First segment, it was all jacked up again. And I literally flipped the desk in this room. I flipped the desk. We had mics that were uh, mounted to the to the table. Yeah. I grabbed them. I ripped the mic off the table. I smashed it through the flat screen and I threw it at him. Oh wow! In this <laughs> office right here. Can you imagine? That? No, I can't. It was. I walked out that door and uh, by the way, it was a live radio show. Okay. Walked off the radio show. I walked outside. Everyone was looking at me like, wow. this guy's become a freaking maniac. And I had. I had become an absolute maniac. I had lost all self-respect for others and for myself on my quest to achieve. Mm -hmm. And I knew that day it all had to change. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I went on a mission to do that. And I think we have. We have successfully done it. It cost me a lot of money. Right? Yeah. Revenue dropped. I lost seven good producing salespeople. Oh, yeah. We got ridiculously connected to mission statement and core values. Mm -hmm. And we're an unbelievably better company because of it. Rudy, you weren't quite around when that happened, were you? I was here, but I was freelance. <laughs> so I wasn't there. <laughs> so you didn't you quite, you didn't quite care enough, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think somewhere there's that video on one of these servers somewhere that video exists. Uh, I think and we deleted it a long time ago. Did we delete it? All right, good. <laughs> good. That would have been an HR issue <laughs> for sure. But I mean, I'm not afraid to talk about it. I mean, I don't make any apologies for it either. I mean, people got to do what they got to do. You got to go. If you're going from zero, you got to get to someplace. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's okay to be selfish about that. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, what if you were at a different place and you wanted to get to a certain income level and you were kind of putting yourself first? I don't see anything that's wrong with that um, you know? I completely agree now in your marriage with Ray you guys must have clarity on that right Be oh yeah yeah well and because you know I do the wealth strategist stuff so you know it's like uh, I'm gonna set up all kinds of documents we know things and you know a lot of people don't do that when they get married and if they would just have the conversation then everybody would know exactly what's gonna happen if whatever happens totally. right Absolutely. and then you don't have to worry and mm -hmm. all the time I see um, clients you know they get married and they don't do these documents and then then guess what they're stressed mm -hmm. because your mind gets the best of you if you don't know the any outcome you know nobody gets married to get divorced right and so but if you don't talk about the subject you know that's like saying that you'll never fire somebody you know or that something's not ever gonna happen so um, or that you'll have a fight you know it's like you just gotta know what's going on with the money and then you don't have to worry about it because all the time when clients don't do that then they are worried about it all the time yeah for us in this company um, the biggest change we made was setting very clear expectations mm -hmm. right what are your performance expectations what does your job description look like so, because before it was so emotional when somebody would do something wrong we would just I would just flip my lid and, and yeah. so now it's very clear have you met the objective what can I do to help you yeah right? hey you still didn't meet it what can I do to help you right. hey you didn't meet it time to go 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. Coach them up, coach them up. Yeah, I'm like that too. I'll put, I will invest time to, you know, help people that I know that are very teachable. Yeah. You know. And right, you're going to need to see because, something on the other side. Yeah, because if I've done this for 26 years, so, you, you know, you learn so much during those years, especially when it comes to money, right? So just from from experience, so you got to share that with people that are working for you. Yeah. Because they're not going to know all that stuff if they haven't been around as long. Well, in your business, it, you got to be careful of the cobbler's kids has no shoes, right? I mean, you can't have people in your office that don't have some oh, money yeah. structure set up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about a couple takeaways for the for the audience, particularly as it comes to making more money. So uh, I'll, you give one, I'll give one, you give one, I'll give one. See if we can't get five or six tips for the audience. So guy or gal starting from zero. I mean, they're just getting going in their career. They're 25 years old. They have no savings because they've just never made any real money yet. Rule number one they should adhere to to be able to make more money. Okay, um, you know, one of the things is, you know, my sister, for example, they're teachers, and they put like $50 a, a month into a college plan for my niece. And now my niece is, is going to college, and that, uh, you know, I don't want to give anybody's but he's, you know, personal information, but in other words, let me tell you, that 50 a month from the time that kid was born is putting her in college now. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Like, if, if you think that $50 isn't enough, I mean, or 25 it is. Because here's the deal. When you're taking action, just like I was saying, action in alignment with your goals. You want savings, you're in your 20s, or you don't have anything, or you're starting over. Just show yourself that you're serious. And then, I mean, I don't care if it's a dollar. Do something to like put that money over because if you can put that over first, like when you get your paycheck or depending if you have a business and it's just $10, you're not going to miss that $10 yeah. and then it'll be 50 and then it'll be a hundred and then it'll be 200 and, and then you're going to see that money growing and even if it's just a savings account. For it now. does add up over time. Yeah. And it makes you feel good. And then you're like, Oh man, this was easy. I'm going to yeah. do more. I'm going to do more. And then again, then your creativity can help you come up with better ideas to make money. So I'm going to dovetail on that for tip two then. What I would say to that same person is whatever that number is that you could put aside, mm -hmm. make it as big as you can. Don't make it a little number. Make it a real number. It must go into a separate account, whether mm -hmm. it's your company retirement account, maybe they match, amazing. If yeah. not, no problem. Yeah. And it needs to go into a separate account that I call the reserve account that is a un- touchable account. Right. In other words, you have to make it extremely difficult. It can't be a second account at Wells Fargo where your primary account is because when you need the money on Saturday night, you'll go to that and you'll take it out. Just transfer it nowadays. You just, just transfer right it out. Mm -hmm. You need to make it really difficult. So it has to be a different bank and it has to be maybe even an online account mm -hmm. that has no debit card connected to it and no check writing. You literally have to make a request from the online bank to have it transferred. Yeah. It just makes it that much more difficult. Yeah. So how about a third tip? So those are two already. Now let's move up the food chain. You got someone in their late 30s. They got a house now. They got the two cars. They're doing okay in their career. Their wife or husband maybe uh, isn't working, and um, and now they got to put away for college. And they got they got to try to work out the debt situation on the big house and cars. Yeah, interestingly, the 30s is the most complicated because there's kids involved and and all kinds of expenses, braces, and cars and things like that. So it's just that you know that saying about pay yourself first. You know, like you you have to do like you said the 401k is the best thing out there because they're doing the match mm -hmm. and um, you've got to you've got to do some kind of a like a financial plan because you need to know what the numbers are and it's not difficult I have very intensive um, software that can put everything in there and you can adapt around it and then you can know exactly how much you need to do is that no. is that software on your website or is it something they need to uh, um, contact you to get that? Yeah, they they could contact me to do it. Yeah. How, how would somebody get in touch with you? What's um, the best way? Well, my website is themoneytherapist.com okay. or Holly Signorelli, but then the word Signorelli throws people. Off. <laughs> so themoneytherapist.com. <laughs> themoneytherapist.com. Yeah. Exactly. So my my tip would be tip number four uh, for that person is I would uh, say that I get, would give yourself a real false positive checkup. Do you really think you're doing better than you are, right? Just because you got approved for the big house and the nice cars and all that sort of stuff, are you really earning the appropriate amount of money um, 
based on the spending habits that you have, right? Yeah. Because, because that guy or gal could be in that $500,000 a year income, and after taxes, 40%, no state income tax in Texas, but if it's California, it's a different ball game. Maybe mm -hmm. you're paying closer to 50%, right? Yeah. Um, and now your you know your house payment could be 10 grand all in right just payment utilities all yeah. that sort of stuff well guess what i mean you, you don't have that much if you're buying two thousand dollar purses for christmas and and jimmy choose and all that sort of stuff you can burn it fast yeah so are you living in false positive would might be my tip on that now let's go to i'm um, 55 mm -hmm. i've moved up the ladder but i've capped mm -hmm and I'm behind. What does that person do? Well, hmm, that's kind of a tricky question. Um, typically, the people that I'm working with in their 50s are continuing to make more money. I mean, because the thing is, sometimes there's a stereotype that when you get to a certain age that you know, you're not as, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, you're out um, to pasture? Yeah, yeah, because here's the thing though, it's like, if you're doing something that that you love to do hopefully especially you know once you get older that you're not stuck into something then then you should be in demand and being able to make more money because of your expertise That's a good you call. know yeah yeah but there's a lot of people that never skilled up enough to actually get there right i mean they just they they made a career out of not getting fired but i've known a lot of people to whether they were clients or friends or whatever that let's say that they got a divorce so they might have gotten some money from the divorce but it's still nothing that they could retire on and then you know you have a lot of women that that does happen to that they are they're out of the workforce for so long and they yeah. can't really get in for more yep. than 10 or 15 bucks an hour yep, yep. but i also know a lot of people in those kind of situations and it might have been this something went bankrupt because we were talking about this earlier about how like with the the phone booth about how things are are become obsolete yeah. you know and I've known people that were millionaires that like b basically overnight lost their business because of things like regulation iTunes, competition yes. yeah employee leaves with key accounts yeah but you can start over like at 40 or 50 because we're living longer now okay and healthier too so if you're 40 or 50 and you're thinking oh man I don't have enough money you have plenty of time yeah and there's lots of things to do like you know there's a, a test on online it's like a it's called a Gallup test and you can answer a bunch of questions it's scientific and it will tell you what your five I've taken greatest that test. yes yes it it's tells awesome. you what your superpower is exactly yeah. and then it, probably when you take the test you'll see oh you know you'll resonate with it because you kind of know what your gifts are but everybody feels like oh I shouldn't be talking totally. about my gifts yeah. and then you know take those gifts and do something with them because you'll be able to make money that way and probably more money than you ever have most of my clients that are millionaires that started in their 40s mm -hmm. because they were they had come into their own yeah so even if you're starting something new that still applies because you're probably starting something new because you've come into your own I love that so I mean I would say to that same person this tip six I would say um, never never give up on the opportunity that you can fix your money situation. Yeah. Um, I would also say that never give up is a little bit of a false nomer. Some things you do need to give up. Sure. I mean, sometimes we do have to take a step backwards to take two steps forwards. Mm -hmm. I, I remember um, I used to I put myself through college working for moving companies, moving boxes, very manual labor. And I remember moving this guy into this big, beautiful house. And I said, what do you do for a living? And he said, I'm a doctor. And he looked in his 70s. Yeah. And I said, wow, you, you've been practicing for like 30, 40 years? He's like, no, I've been practicing for 20. I went back to school in my 40s and became a doctor. I, I had a client that did that, yes, and extremely successful, yeah. And I remember thinking at the time, oh my God, that's a lot of years, you know? <laughs> it's not like going to get a certification, right, you know? Right, right. But it totally worked out. So yeah. I would challenge that person in that 55 range who's behind and they're starting to think, well, I'm never gonna get rich. I, I would mm -hmm. tell you, change that mindset. I would also say to them that at $2,000 a month, you have a superpower that as a side hustle, you can make $2,000 a month. And the other thing too is again, the, having the conversations about money because mm. the stereotype is that a lot of people believe 
believe when they get to a certain age that they can't do something bigger or they can't be successful because somebody's going to want to work with somebody younger. But that is not always the case. Yeah. And that, and again, is a, a mindset because this really comes down to what is your money story? What are you telling yourself? If you're telling yourself that, oh, I can't get a better job because I'm 55 now, then you're not going to get a better job because you've already told yourself. And and for the love of God, please do not go into conversations with people having a negative story. Cut them out. Do not, you have to be strong. If you wanna be successful with money and you wanna have money and build money, then do not engage in any conversation with anybody who's telling a negative money story. It's just gonna bring you down. Look, I see, I play poker with these guys second Tuesday of every month for the mm -hmm. last 13 years. And I'm the youngest guy by 20 years plus. Yeah. These guys are all in their 70s. And when I was telling them about the new book coming out, um, you, you, you could immediately sense the energy change at the dinner table, right? So we, we, How was it then? We, we, you could see. You could see the guys that were super well healed. All they want to do was talk about the book and strategies that were in the book and yes. whether they agreed with them or disagreed, right? Yeah. And the guys that were in false positive in the middle making good money, mm -hmm. you know, they shut right down. And the guys who were way behind and had given up said, can I take your plate, right? Let me go clean the table. They completely so disengaged. So they didn't even want to hear anything about totally your book. Terrified of the concept of money. That's why they never made any money. Yeah. The guys in the middle who were in false positive and still spending everything they were making were scared to death, but mm -hmm. they were listening. Yeah. And then the rich guys at the table, they ate it up. Yeah. All they wanted to do was talk about the concepts and, and strategies. So yes. doesn't that play out everywhere? I mean, that, that poker does. table is exactly how it works at a dinner table anywhere else. Yeah, it does. Think about it. It's like if you go to a concert, then everybody's there for the same artist, right? So for that reason, everybody's jumping up and down and they're having a great time, right? But but then think about the opposite of that where people come together for a riot yeah. that is it, it's the same it's it's the equal and opposite right yeah. do you want to be in, with your money story around people that not that you shouldn't be around somebody that doesn't make money totally. but I'm talking about money, more of a money story because you could be a teacher or an artist and not make a lot of money but be completely content okay? yeah and, and that but teacher may have great strategies people, yes but be around those kind of people because when you're around abundant let's just call it abundance you know you know money's just a part of abundance then and you're going to feel so different than if you're talking with people that have a negative story or people like that you just said that you were talking about a book and, and they were they didn't even want to they defaulted it, right back to their yeah, comfort zone and exactly. some are comfortable talking about it, some were but I mean that's that's how it all plays out that, mm -hmm. and, and I don't believe that that happens overnight you got to train your brain yes. to get comfortable in all those different categories and most people I mean I suppose a good takeaway for today too is that you do have to spend some time looking inside yeah and and, and what is your superpower? What are you good at? How, how are you comfortable? How are you not comfortable? And then you got to put a plan in place. Right. I mean, every successful person did not wing it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That It's really important there, too, because we're talking about mindset, but we're also talking about action and, and looking at your numbers and not being afraid of it. You know, don't be afraid to open up the bank account, you know, yeah. and see what's going on. What about in your practice? Have you seen people who are like, I don't need to work hard because I'm going to inherit it. As soon as my old man croaks, I'm going to get his money. So I don't need to. I don't need to find my superpower and do any of that. I just need to hang on long enough till the old man bites it. I rarely see that. I do know clients that have inheritance coming, but they work hard and they save money. Mm -hmm. You know, because you never just because somebody says you're going to have an inheritance, you don't know what's going to happen to that person, and they may need all of that money. And I've seen that happen too. Yeah. So if you have an inheritance coming, that's great. But you should never rely on that. Ever, yeah, no doubt. Ever. But, and that guy who's probably longer. doing it. They could get sick, and you know, there's you, there's you never know. Dude, yeah. long term long term health care insurance is or just long term care can burn through it. Oh yeah. Ten thousand yeah. a month is not a big deal. Yeah, and do you, you can really burn. want to be dependent on, you know, something like that? I mean if you have a trust that the money's already sitting there and it's for you, you know, that's great. More power to you. But I've known people that have that that still 
you know, work because yeah. they love what they do. Mm -hmm. I guess the person who's living like that isn't coming to you for advice. No. Anyway, right? <laughs> You're just sitting around waiting for the old man to die. <laughs> All right, Holly, thanks. Always a pleasure to see you. I respect you. I appreciate you coming in. We only got one thing left to do, and that's sign the booth. Yeah, sign All the right, booth. let's All right, go let's sign the booth. All right, just anywhere I want. Yeah, give us one sec. I'm going to close okay. the show. So, guys, right, thanks right. for listening. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you very much. I'm Matt Monero. Follow me on all social media platforms at Matt Monero. Holly can be found at themoneytherapist.com and uh, most social media at Holly Signorelli, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Till the next time we talk. See you down the road.